actually got off, got through the fifth, sixth, and, uh, you know, we had a chance to get the lead and we gave the ball to Kevin and obviously did a tremendous job, didn't give up a hit. Uh, tried to pitch to contact a little more tonight. He had really good stuff. Stuff was really good. And uh, just a uh, tremendous job by, by our offense, getting, uh, you know, Mesa's pitch count up, fouled off a lot of pitches and, uh, you know, a couple of big swings there. I thought, obviously, you know, the, the, the base hit by Opus to tie it with two outs uh, was huge because we'd already left some runners out there that, you know, could have tied the ball game and put us in the lead. And then, uh, you know, super big hit uh, by Wallace uh, going oppo to give us the lead. And then, you know, uh, another big hit by, by Opitz with two outs to give us a two-run lead there. And then, you know, that, that eighth inning started real. It's, it, was, it's, it, it happened very fast. They got two quick outs on two pitches. Um, it looked like uh, I think Webb got to a 3-1 count. They had a double, then they had a walk to Goodhart. They didn't want to go right, the right-hander against the lefty, it looked like, and then Waltz hit a three-run homer real quick, and uh, then Kevin finished it up. Just a super job by the team, and, uh, you know, look forward to coming out again tomorrow and compete. Coach? Dave, I think both of Opitz's RBIs tonight came on the first pitch he saw the at-bat. Was he just seeing the ball well tonight, or did you see that coming in batting practice, or what did you think of him? Well. Uh, I thought he had a really good night, obviously, with that he was just, you know, on pitches. I mean, the base hit to right, he, he jumped on it, like you said. The, the base hit to, to left off the left-hander, hit right hand, it was the first pitch, and it was fastball as well. Um, you know, I just, even when he, when he made an out today, he hit the ball really hard to center field, and it might have been on the first pitch. So, I just think he was feeling it, and he was looking for the, a good pitch early. It didn't matter what it was. And uh, he saw it and he hit it. And, uh, it was good to see. And how big was it for Wicklander after having kind of the short start last week and to bounce back and, and pitch as well as he did today? Well, it was big for him. and It was big for us. Uh, you know, he only threw like 75 pitches last week or whatever he threw and uh, maybe 70. And I don't know. I think more, more he just – I don't think he was concerned at all about what happened last week. I think he just didn't have command, you know, it given us like seven or eight great starts in a row. And, you know, you kind of knew something like that could happen and Tennessee's a good team, but uh, uh, yeah, it was big. It was big for our team, big for our bullpen for him to, to hold them down. Tom. Question about uh, Wallace first home run inside the right field pole, next home run inside the left. I mean, what can you say about the kids tonight? He had a great night. I mean, what, what can you say? I mean, you're over in four runs. Let's hit a solo home run to give us the lead. Hit a three-run homer to the pull side to, you know, not put it away completely, but give us a really good cushion. And, um, you know, he just he took some good hacks, the other bats that he didn't get hits on. So uh, the other bat. So it, it was uh, it was big. You know, he's uh, he stepped it up for us. Could you feel the 11,000? Was it a little different? Definitely feel them. They were loud. We really appreciate it. It was, it was great, especially, you know, it was really loud. Seventh inning hog call, the best one I've heard in a couple of years. And uh, I, I'm sure our players heard it. Thanks, Dave. Bob? Um, hey, hey, Dave, how you doing? Um, I think that was a career high uh, strikeouts for Wicklander. What, what was working so well for him to strike those guys out that many times? Well, you know, the first time through, he went a lot of fastballs. He changed it up a little bit, started mixing in a little bit, mostly sliders, a few change-ups, uh, busting them in, moving it around. Um, you know, I didn't realize that he had that many strikeouts, but, uh, you know, until after the game and I looked at the box score. But just, uh, I don't know. I think just uh, he had a lot more command tonight, and, and uh, he, was, he was able to get ahead in the count, get him guessing a little bit, hit his spots. And cops, you know, pretty efficient three uh, innings, 39 pitches. Even I can tell that's 13 pitches an inning, which is, is pretty good, I'd say. How do you feel about his efficiency and what that'll mean for his availability the rest of the weekend? Yeah, three innings, 39 pitches. It was, it was uh, outstanding. Um, yeah, I would say he's available. And uh, uh, just good job throwing strikes, getting ahead, you know. Uh, I think he maybe, maybe walked one hitter. And I think in that – 
that at bat, I think he had the hitter down maybe maybe one, two, and uh, just it slipped away. I give the hitter credit, but uh, yeah, he'll be ready. Okay, thanks. Andrew Ellis. Hey, coach. Early in the earlier in the year, you said something along the lines of you just wanted Wicklander to pitch the way that you know he's capable of pitching. Did you ever imagine that he would put together an SEC season quite like this? Well, you know, it's hard to envision it because he was struggling. He was struggling at the end of last year when things finished up, and you know, all we had to go off of was what we saw in the fall. And you know, I guess after a couple outings, I envisioned it, but probably not until we saw it. But he deserves it. He's worked extremely hard, and uh, he's been through a lot. And I'm just really happy for him. Seth? Dave, was there any thought to throw Wicklander back out there in the seventh? Uh, just a little bit. But uh, he was at 96 pitches, I think. Yeah, 96. So that was pretty much the, the end of that. If it had been 85, maybe. But once he got in the 90s, we, we thought, hey, we got a, we got a lead. Let's just let's go for it right here. Randy? Dave, talk about the work by KC behind the plate in regards to Kevin. It, it pretty well seems like it allows Kevin to throw just about any type of pitch that he wants. Well, it does, and uh, they know each other extremely well, and we don't get in their way too much, honestly. Like I've said before, we want to keep that rhythm going, get the ball, get your sign and go, and Kevin pretty much throws whatever Casey puts down, and if we throw in a suggestion, if – Casey might might go with it. He might not. We don't we don't we don't mind either way. It's a suggestion. So he's the one sitting back there. He's got a good feel about where those hitters are standing and what they're doing. So um, and then I think Kevin trusts him, and they just he goes with whatever whatever he gets. Caden said on the post game interview that uh, he guessed properly tonight. He guessed on his first at bat the oppo, and then he guessed on the last one the slider inside. Is it unusual for a kid that young to be able to, to, I guess you can say, guess that well? Well, I mean, he's intelligent. He's had a lot of big at-bats this year. I think that it, he's just going off of what he sees. You know, what, what has the pitcher done the previous hitter or two? And what has he done against right-handed, you know, right-handed hitter like he is? So, uh, yeah, probably a little unusual. But uh, this time of year, you know, you can – I don't really – they're really not first-year players anymore. They're really second-year guys. They got a lot of at-bats. Coming back around, Hutch. Dave, I think if I remember right, it looked like it was raining pretty good when Cops was out there at one point. How did you think he handled the elements, and does that make it even more impressive what he did out there today? Yeah, I mean, he handled it great, obviously. You know, just the one walk, and he seemed to be ahead of most of the hitters. And it rained for about three minutes pretty hard. And other than that, it, it, was, it was light and – I mean, we played a lot of wet weather this last five or six weeks, so I don't think it phases him too much. As long as he can keep his feet underneath him, and the mound was in really good shape. And what did you think of the plays? I think Nesbitt and Slavens both had good ones there in the seventh and eighth innings. What did you think of those? Well, the Nesbitt play was a great play because there was two strikes on the hitter, and he got jammed a little bit and chopped it into the ground. So Nesbitt was already playing back because of the two-strike count. He knew his only play was a barehanded ball was wet, made a perfect throw. Uh, runner's not real quick, but he got him. And uh, that was a great play. And then Slavin's just leaving his feet. You know, that was a good job to go out there and, and you know, put, the, put his glove on the ball and knock it down. I think it went in and out of his glove. And he had two options. He could have flipped the ball to Kevin that wanted him to flip it. But, uh, you know, at least he got to the bag on that dive. I didn't know if he was going to quite get there. It looked like he kind of got stuck in the dirt. Bob? Yeah, Dave, I mean, Casey's always going to give you a ton behind the plate, handle the pitchers, all that. But when he has an offensive game like this, how how uh, nice is that? It's great. I mean, when it, it seems like when, when Casey gets a couple of big hits, we're winning. And, uh, um, you know, he, he works hard. He, he's a switch hitter, works from both sides, gets a lot of swings in, does extra work. And uh, he deserves to, to get some hits. I'm telling you, he's, he does, he's done a great job. Thanks. Okay. Randy, you have anything else? I was just going to ask, Dave, you got 96, you mentioned 96 pitches out of Wicklander, six innings. What were your expectations going into this game for Wick? 
Well, we were hoping he'd give us six innings, honestly. Uh, that's usually about, you know, going to be in the 90s most of the time, uh, when, especially since he strikes out a lot of hitters. Uh, the count's going to get up there. Um, you know, our biggest probably decision was that we want to go right to Kevin or did we want to bridge it with another pitcher? And Coach Hobbs and I discussed it and decided to go with Kevin. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks for your time, Coach. Okay. See you. We got Caden Wallace coming up next. All you.